Hey guys, welcome back to Jason and Journey Builds. Uh, we're back out at the shop tonight. We got a, a few uh, things to finish on our punch list before we can take the Bronco off the rotisserie. And we want to show you our new cage we got today. So uh, before we get started, you guys hit the subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. And here we go. Hi right, guys, real quick before we get started on the Bronco, I just wanted to talk to you about the cage. What we ended up ordering was a Kenser Engineering or Crawler's Edge family cage. We looked at all the different cages out there and we decided on this one because I wanted a good street cage, one that keeps my family safe because I'll have my girls riding with me. It comes with pre-welded bungs for the seat belts, so we'll have three-point harnesses in front and back. I'm a tall guy. Uh, in a, and I need as much knee room as I can get. And since this Bronco is not going to be on, you know, we won't be rock crawling with it. It might go, you know, on a dirt road somewhere sometime. But we really plan it's just going to be more of a street street Bronco. It's got the forward bars, but the forward bars mount to the windshield frame. And so we don't have to have this get in the way of the glove box. It doesn't get in the way of your uh, emergency brake pedal. So um, this just seemed to work out best for this design and for the Bronco that we're building. But uh, it's a great looking unit. I'm excited that it's finally here, finally able to show you guys. I won't go into it anymore today. I just wanted to finally give you guys a heads up of what we've got. Oh, lastly, you can, uh, with this cage, it also allows you to have soft top, which we're going to have, and it allows the bows to uh, be able to fold down in the back. So it's really the best of both worlds. You know, it's gonna do what we want. Anyways, here's our cage. Uh, I'm gonna get it primed up and hopefully in the next video, we'll be getting the Bronco off the rotisserie and kind of dry fit it and start seeing this Bronco come together looking like what we sort of have in our brain here. Let's get to what we're gonna do tonight. Uh, we got a, got a couple spots and I bet some of you guys have seen these same spots before. So let me show you what I've got. Um, I'm in a hurry. I want to see this in, but you know sometimes you don't get ahead of yourself, and I'm fighting it really bad because I want to put this cage in, and the rotisserie won't allow me to put the cage in. The great thing about having a rotisserie is being able to sit to work on stuff upside down and be able to get to places and not have to weld under there, right? So. Show you guys a few spots. Okay, guys, uh, this is what I want to show you is um, it's up underneath the dash, sort of at the firewall. You have this area underneath, and this one you can tell it's it's had water sit in it for quite some time, and it's rusted out. The sides are good, are still solid. It's just where the water's set here. So what I'm gonna do, I need to repair this before I finish with the rotisserie, because as you can see, I can sit directly under here. My welds will all be vertical down and I can weld this up with no problem and it's not popping and falling on my chest. So uh, this is a spot I want to address and get all this fixed and we'll we'll go through how we fix this and so the next thing uh, I want to do is add some spot welds to my wheel tubs uh, the wheel tub to the Bronco tub floor so I went ahead and added spot welds and what I did basically um, is I drilled through the tub but stopped when I got to the, the Bronco floor so I can burn these in and that'll sort of double up on my spot welds. And I'm doing the same place uh, where the roll cage will mount front and back. And then I want to do any grinding up underneath here before I get it off the rotisserie because again, I can stand here and grind rather than lay up underneath it or beat my head up trying to get up underneath it on the lift. So 
I've got a pretty good punch list of things to do, but I can do this in a few hours and have that finished up. We're going to finish, fix any grinding, add um, spot welds to the tubs. We're going to make sure that our floor is plenty sturdy for the roll bar. And also, I'm going to try to tie the, the roll bar to the frame. So once we get it set in here and we've got the frame back under it tomorrow, I can start putting together a plan for tie, making a frame tie the bottom of the roll cage to the frame so it doesn't just try to punch through the steel if we were to roll this thing over just for a little added safety but uh, we'll talk about that some more in one of the next videos but uh, anyways here we go guys okay, so what I bought to, fin to fix underneath the dash is a piece of eighth inch flat bar two inches wide which is exactly the width of that bottom uh, the bottom of the uh, dash there and what I'll do is I'm going to notch this out I'm, I don't want to cut the bottom off I'm going to leave it there because I can reattach this to the vertical sections I'll drill it's got two threaded holes and then it's got two mounts for like around the steering wheel so all that we will uh, I'll notch around then I can weld all that to this eighth inch material I can finish the ends and this will be super super strong but I, I just went, uh, picked this up today. This is six foot stick. I think I need 53 inches. So we're in good shape. So it could be just one seamless piece all the way across. And uh, that'll be done. And it, it, it's not a bad fix at all. It looked really bad, but it's, again, it's just metal. We can fix this. So let's do it. Right, so how, we're, how I'm gonna start is I'm gonna put my patch panel in from kick panel to kick panel. I'm going to take it all the way to the edge here and bridge all this, um, build it up. I'll dress it back out on the sides where it's missing. We'll get it all welded back up. I'm going to notch around these pieces here. Can you see that, John? I want to notch around these and then I'll weld this up. That way I don't have to cut these loose and I'll weld my new piece of steel in here and the same thing here at the steering wheel. We'll do the same thing, get it all welded up, and this will be fixed. So the way I'm going to start is just get a good measurement from kick panel to kick panel. We'll cut our part, and then I can stick it in here and start making my, uh, my marks for where I need to notch the, the piece of steel out. Fifty-seven and a quarter. Okay guys, here's um, two spots that I have to notch out. That's one there and one right there. We'll get that notched out. These holes here, I'm going to drill out a little extra large and this piece should just fall right in. I've already cut it to length. So this one was 57 and a quarter. And then once I get all this trimmed and everything looks like it's going to fit well, I'll flip it over and I'm going to put weld through primer on the back of it. So that part's already primed. What I'll do is I'm just going to grind the edges where this will get welded back so there will be primer between these two pieces. Okay guys, here's how the, the repair will go. Pull this back out and prime it like I was saying. Uh, put the weld primer underneath. And while that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and get my in a little DA and sand all the, the primer off where I'm going to be welding. Go ahead and clean, clean the areas to be welded. And uh, we'll, I'll just go ahead and weld this all the way across the seam, all the way down. I'll fix the end. I'll get it bridged. But you sort of see what I was, what I was going for here. It's the same elevation across. I can tie it back here against the, the kick panel. And that'll get all this really tied back together again. And then I'll get this bridged over. That's going to be fine. And we'll get this end fixed down here too.
Okay, guys, uh, I've got it primed. I've got it, I've got my metal dressed. Where well, I'm gonna do my welding. And you can see the primed side is down. I'm not gonna worry about priming the top side because I'll, I'll just shoot it again with, uh, with my metal lock once I get it ground down after it's welded. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the welder out and get this thing stitched in. Okay guys, here's the repaired um, dash support, basically underneath the dash where your steering wheel mounts to, but it is uh, repaired all the way across, fully seam welded both sides. I've got a little rust converter sprayed there on the on that back wall, just a little bit where I'd missed with the sandblaster, but anyways, you see it's all seamed out. You know, that's... I'll weld it out there. So that's gonna be good and strong. That's uh, that's all we need. Hopefully, after we get this thing this thing seam sealed real well, this uh, we shouldn't have any water back in there again. But uh, there we go. There's that repair. And we had talked about filling in just some additional welds around the tub, just around the back. I just added a little bit to the back support just anywhere I thought maybe I could get just a little extra strength on these panels since we're gonna have a roll cage sitting on top of it the rest I have guys is just kinda clean up and uh, I'm gonna get out here and just get to grinding and get this thing ready so we can get the body off the rotisserie. Hey guys I appreciate you hanging out with me tonight uh, glad we've got this finished under the dash I sprayed some uh, the rust converter it's uh, on it. That's why you start to see some of the black, and then I'll prime it tomorrow. I get it sanded and primed, but it's a it's a good repair. We don't have to worry about it now. Uh, I've got the spot welds filled, but like I was saying a minute ago, uh, I'll finish up all these last little, um, just small little areas I got to pick up um, before we take it off the rotisserie. So next video we'll we'll be putting the Bronco on the frame. So uh, you guys stay tuned and. Appreciate you hanging in there with me, and we will see you guys again real soon. Y'all have a great day.